good morning children and welcome back to the evs2 class so children since today that is 4th of september you have your unit test of evs2 that's why children today we'll be doing a recap of the lesson that will come in your unit test okay that is european expeditions to india okay so shall we begin now so today's date is 4th of september and we'll do a, just a quick revision of european expeditions how the europeans came to india how the four european countries the people who belong to four european countries came to india and how the one out of this four the one became the most powerful and then they started to trade india and after trade they started to occupy and rule over india so shall we begin shall we move okay so children so this is the lesson european expeditions to india and we are going to do a recap so first children what is an expedition an expedition is a long journey by a group of people to a far away place for a special purpose what is an expedition expedition an expedition is a long journey okay by a group of people to a far away place for a special purpose they come for a special purpose and they go also to a far away place they don't take the journey to nearby places but to a far away place that's why it's called expedition okay and at the beginning of the 15th century at the beginning of the europeans wanted to explore more of the world so explorers from countries such as portugal britain france and the netherlands begin expedition so these four countries they begin expeditions they also wanted to find new sea routes to different countries in asia including europe they also what they children they wanted they wanted to find new sea routes to come to asia and not only to asia but also to india so why did the europeans want to find new routes to reach reach asia now children they are in their place in europe okay they are happy in their country but why do they want to come to india or other asian countries or what is the purpose okay to take uh, such a long journey so let's see what is the main reason behind it <coughs> asia was well known for things that were not very easy available in other parts of the world so this is the main reason asia had many things okay which were not easily available in other parts of the world the europeans got the following goods from india and other asian countries such as china so the europeans they came seeking for these things which were not easily available in their country but it was easily available in asian countries including india and china so what are these these are spices like pepper nutmeg cloves we all know india is famous for spices especially kerala then crops like tea and coffee then cloth silk cotton so children these things they came in searching of in search of these things why so that they can get these things which are not easily available in their own countries okay so let's move to the next page <coughs> so what it is given next it's given however it took a long time to reach asia by land at times the rulers of some places in asia did not allow europeans to travel through their kingdoms to reach another place the europeans believed that by finding new sea routes they would be able to reach asian countries easily then they could increase trade with these countries so children what they used to do but it also used to take a long time okay because they used to come by uh, land okay and many of the uh, rulers they didn't allow them the europeans to travel through their countries so the europeans thought of finding a new sea route okay finding a new sea route so that they would be able to reach these countries asian countries easily and they would be easily they can easily come and uh, seek these take these things which were not available in their countries so 
they wanted to do trade okay the main purpose was to do trade with the asian countries now children next we come to european traders in india the european traders who came to india now vasco da gama a portuguese sailor was the first to discover a sea route to india from europe so he reached kozico calicut kerala in 1498 so vasco da gama who was a portuguese explorer he used to explore to many different places he was the first <coughs> to discover a sea route to india from europe so from europe he came to india and he reached kozicode okay kozicode is a place in kerala he reached there through a sea route and he came from uh, the arabian sea he reached through uh, he reached kerala okay so he was the first person to discover sea route to reach india so after vis- his visit portuguese traders formed the group and got permission from the rail- from their ruler to trade raw materials so after his visit the sea route was discovered so now the portuguese traders they started to trade with india soon traders from other countries also formed trading companies soon when other people of the european europe saw <coughs> that in that the sea route was uh, discovered and that they could also come and trade with india so the dutch came first the portuguese came, came then the dutch the british and the then the french then they established their trading companies and factories in india they started setting they started setting up factories also and they started their trading posts in india so we can see here children the trading posts this is 1502 the first portuguese factory then was established in kochi then 1605 members of the dutch east india company came to india then 1615 the east british east india company set up a trading post in india and 1668 the french so first the portuguese then the dutch then the british and then the french they came to india so next with children we have the rise of the british rule in india how the british started their rule in india first they came with the purpose of children only they came with the purpose of trade but then slowly they started to rule over india and how did it take did it take place let's see <coughs> it's given here children by the end of the 17th century the british as well as the portuguese the french and the the dutch the french has established trading posts all over india however many fights took place among these countries though these four countries they came to india they established their trading companies they established their trading posts but they were fighting with each other now why did the europeans fight with each other let's see because the the companies the spices fine cloth and jewelry producing were in high demand in many parts of the world all the companies were making huge profits by being indian goods buying indian goods at lower prices and selling them abroad at higher prices so children what they used to do they used to uh, since india was very rich in ju- the production of jewelry clothes and spices so these four companies what they they used to get the product from the indian people at lower prices and sell them in the world market at higher prices so by this they were making huge profits so each and every company wanted to become more powerful and wealthier than the other companies so this led them to fight with each other for example there was a fight between the british and french they both fought with each other in the first carnatic war so ultimately the british east india company defeated all the other european trading companies and gained control of many parts of india so ultimately there were war between four these four trading posts but who came out as the all time winner it was the british east india company they defeated all the other trading companies and they control over many parts of india also <coughs> so now india becomes a british colony now india becomes a colony under the british so after defeating the european countries 
the British decided to make India their colony. In other words, they decided to control and rule over India. So decide, they decided to control and rule over India. They thought that by ruling India, they could do the following. So now they did. They the British since they became the all they became the all time uh, winner. They defeated the other three European trading companies. So now they thought that they would make India a colony. That means they would rule and control over India. So that they thought by doing this, they would buy raw materials from India at very low prices, okay, and give them to factories in Britain. So what they would do, they would buy raw materials from India, okay, and they would give them to the factories in Britain. They did not make any factory in India. They, they only want... Uh, they only what they used to do they used to get the raw materials give the uh, give the uh, this one raw materials to the factories in britain and the finished products they used to sell in higher profits to india so in this way they were earning huge profits next what is that how did the british establish their rule over india now how the british they established their rule over india first they established a trading company they they were able to chase off the other three companies now how did they they were able to establish their rule over india let's see during the 18th century many small kingdoms ruled over other different parts the rulers of these companies of these kingdoms constantly fought among themselves for power and control of Indian territories. Now children during the 18th century, many small small kingdoms were there and there were no unity among them. So they were continuously fighting among themselves. Now the British were very clever. They took advantage of the situation and what they used to do, they used to give presents and money to one Indian ruler and promise to protect their kingdom from other rulers. In return, what they used to do, they used, they asked the favor of looking after their British soldiers which were positioned in their kingdom. So the British would use this arrangement to interfere in the affairs of the kingdom such as deciding the air, making rules and so on. The British also waged war battles against various Indian rulers. Now some, some Indian rulers, they complied with the from uh, with the requests of the British but many of them they did not comply with so, so what happened many wars took place between the British and the Indians okay now let's see which are the wars these are the various wars which took place between the British and the Indians and they are the Battle of Plassey the Nawab of Bengal Sirajuddaula and between the British was fought Battle of Buxar the Nawab of Bengal, Mir Qasim, the Nawab of Awad Suja, Suja Uddaula, and Mughal Emperor Shah Alam II was fought between the British and the British. Then the Anglo Mysore War, Mysore Wars, four wars were fought from 1769 to 1799, and I Hyder Ali and his son Tipu Sultan of Mysore fought. Then the <coughs> Anglo Maratha Wars, the Anglo Maratha Wars, rulers of the Maratha empire okay the rulers of the maratha empire they fought against the british but you know though so many wars were fought who was the ultimate winner the british is india company was the ultimate winner they came out as victorious and they um, the indian rulers were defeated in all these wars and they in the british east india company became very powerful <coughs> Now the impact of the British East India Company on the people. So what was the impact? Okay, what was the what was the British East India Company started their rule over India? So what was the impact? Okay, what was the result on the various people? First, the result on rulers, let's see. The British made laws that allowed him them to take over the kingdoms easily. One such law was that if a ruler did not have their own son, the kingdom would go under British. So now the British started to interfere in the laws of the kingdoms. And what they would do, if a king did not have any of his own child, okay, then the kingdom would, after his death, would automatically go into the hands of the British, Britishes, okay. In Bengal also, the B British took the responsibility of collecting portions of the revenue and in Bengal, what they used to do, they used to collect revenues, okay, taxes. 
and in this way many rulers lost control over their kingdoms and in this way many rulers who control the uh, who control the kingdoms lost their power then impact on artisans the british sent raw materials from india to factories in england the british factory made goods were cheaper than the hand made goods okay so what the british sent raw materials from india to factories in england we all know and what happened the finished products were cheaper than the handmade goods of the indian artisans so the indian artisans they suffered losses and they were forced to sell their goods at low prices so children we shall stop till here all the best for your exam read the paper properly and give a thorough reading to the book also okay so that if any questions comes from inside you will be able to do and then write the answers properly okay so bye bye children and have a good day